Hey y'all, it's Jo. Don't have any FOs, but I've got a lot of other stuff to talk to y'all about. Okay, so the most exciting news, y'all, I got to go see Jill with the Fiber Floozy, um, also known as the Essential Blossom. Um, her daughter lives near me and just had a baby, so Jill was down there visiting, down here, visiting with her daughter, and we got together. So it was a lot of fun. I was so excited to meet her. We met at a little local uh, yarn shop, which is in the town um, near me that um, I have shown y'all before, a little local yarn shop called McNeedles. And um, it's so lovely to go in there, but I always get high on the yarn fumes and a little giddy and I'm just not myself. Or maybe I am. So yeah, so after we um, got through digging and fondling and squeezing all the good scrumptious yarn, then we went and had some coffee um, and sat down and visited and she showed me how to knit. Now, I don't know how much of this my brain is going to retain, but I think it was like the next day, yeah, I was on Zoom with some friends and so um, I had went and bought some little circular knitting needles at um, Joann's. And I went, uh, when I was on Zoom, I was trying to figure it out again. I could remember how to cast on where you hold the yarn and you scoop and then you go through the middle. Okay, I remembered cast on, but when it came to knit, I was like, wait, does it go this way or that way? And then I couldn't remember which way to, to wrap the yarn, this way or that way. I'm like, do you wrap it like for crochet that way? And they were like, no, go that way. I don't know. So anyway, Nicole had to reteach me how to knit. And I think that's what she taught me. <laughs> so um, that's all I did with it. And I found myself, I'm going to, you know, just disconnect this because you know, rip it. It was just that little bit of practice. But I was so focused and intense, with intent of trying to do it right. My stitches are so tight. This one little row made my hands cramp up because it was so tight. And I was trying to focus on not losing a stitch because when you lose a stitch and knit, I'm like, oh no, there's no just like, crochet you rip out a you know you rip out to where you want to start and then you go but then you do it over again when you lose a stitch in knit you lost it buddy I know there's a way to um figure out how to get that stitch back but it's not like I was making anything just practicing so we'll see if I continue with that or not <laughs> so I had a really good visit with Jill and um I hope that I get to see her again before she leaves. She's been in town quite a while and um, finally got to meet up with her. So, yeah. So, I hope I get to see her again before she leaves. I mean, we can meet for lunch one day or um, meet at Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. You know, that would be fun. Jill, you're such a sweetie. Thanks for meeting me. And she gave me a present. So sweet, y'all. Just just so sweet. This is something new that I have not seen. She said she got this at my Michaels. I'm like, are you kidding me? Because I go there all the time, of course, you know. I have never seen this yarn there. She said it was the only one. So I don't know if they got it in and then other people came and snatched it up. I want to know who these other people are who live around me snatching up my yarn. But anyway, it's called Colors. And it's by Loops and Threads. It's 507.44 yards, 200 grams. And it says it's a size four, but y'all, that's tiny. Maybe they're calling it a four because it's got a halo on it. I don't know if you can see the halo, but um, I'd say that's definitely more like a, a three. But what do I know, right? 
I'm just saying it's a very small four. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's awesome. I think it's acrylic. Yeah, 100% acrylic. So look at the colors in there. The blue, the purple, the browns. Gorgeous. I just can't wait to see this worked up. Got to figure out a pattern for it. So if y'all know Jill, you probably also know that she um, does like essential oil stuff. So she made up a little concoction for me. And y'all, this smells heavenly. Oh my gosh, Jill. This is just, this is, she said it was lavender, sweet orange, and geranium. Oh my goodness. I just want to. Uh, smells so good. And she also made this a bracelet with the lava rocks on it right there. I guess all these ones that have like little, that look like bumpy lava rocks. You can put the essential oil on there and then you wear it and you smell it. And that's just, uh, thank you so much, Jill. I love it. So here's her card right here. I'm gonna cover up her phone number because I don't know if she would want her phone number blasted all through. And here's the back with all her different sites and stuff. She's got a um, she's got a website, right, Jill? The Essential Blossom, the Essential Blossom Instagram, Facebook, the Essential Blossom, Fiber Floozy on YouTube and the essential blossom at gmail.com so that's her um site so we need to go check that out and go check out jill's uh youtube channel too i'll link that down below i'm also going to link the video that she took um at mcneedles um and i took a short one also so i'll i'll put that here on my video but i'll also link hers down below too if you want to look at what she did here we are, McNeedles. It's so quaint. So cute, so beautiful. It is on Highway 190 in Lacombe, Louisiana. Um, see, we got our winter gloomy weather. I think we're supposed to get sun tomorrow, so hopefully. And it's got this cute little wraparound porch onto the side. I've showed y'all this in another video, but I know there's a lot more of y'all that watch me now, and um, you don't need to go looking back for the other one. But this, this is so beautiful out here, and look at this back area. Now, this gorgeous oak tree right here. Okay, we're on the inside of the store here. I just met Jill from Fiber Floozy and we are getting ready to go have some coffee. And Hi. Hi. Tell them your name and your channel. I mean I, your Instagram. I am a blink of bliss on Instagram and my name's Heidi. Everybody meet Heidi. She's so sweet and was so helpful. Thanks. And she knows that us yarny people are just crazy. And I get such ADD looking at all this beautiful stuff. Here's our Mardi Gras section, y'all. You know, because we live in the land of Mardi Gras. So we got some Mardi Gras yarns. And all these beautiful yarns. And there's Jill with the fiber floozy. She's making a video. <laughs> Talking about some different yarns in more detail. Better than I do. So I'm going to link her video down below for y'all to watch. <laughs> and I have not. And we got some babies in the back here. Aren't they cute? Yes, I know. You're doing such a good job. You're doing a good job. Here's some more beautiful yarn and beautiful bags. And then there's another room off here. This would be like, this is like a little old house. So raised wood house and this would be like a sun porch that you might see on little quaint older homes and here's some more yarns back here and they're doing a little bit 
more stuff here because they just had a trunk show, so they're trying to put things back in order, but everything is so well organized and they are so very helpful. So I hope y'all can make it here. One day if you ever pass through La Combe, Louisiana. So look everybody, Hi. it's Jill from the Fiber Floozy. Hey guys. We finally got to meet up. Her daughter lives here in Lacombe and she just had a baby. Yes. And it's She's so wonderful sweet. news and it's a great visit and we're gonna go have some coffee. Yes, coffee. It's time <laughs> for coffee. <laughs> See ya. See you guys. Oh, so let me show you the, um, the yarn that I got while I was there with Jill. And course you can't resist you can't walk out of there with nothing right so at first I was being I was trying to be frugal and went to the clearance section right and um, I found a few gems there let me show you those first get them out the bag here um, there was this yarn it's called it's cascade yarns and Melly La, I know I'm not saying that right. It's fingering weight, uh, it's 45 silk, 33 wool, and 20 nylon. This is a 100 gram ball with 437 yards. And um, it kind of reminds me of, a, of like a fingering roving yarn is how I would describe it. So, let's see, is there a lot color, no, color name on this one? No, but these, well, and I got these two also, the same thing. These two look like pretty much the same colorway. Although I'm looking, you see this one has black this one doesn't so I don't know they'll probably all be used they'll they'll be used for different projects anyway but yeah it's not the same because the black one has orange also so yeah so it's three different colorways um y'all these were only six dollars and fifty cents each score and then well I saw oh this wasn't this wasn't clearance. Um, I, this kind of caught my eye. And I love the pinky purple in there and like the fuchsia pinky, you know. But um, this is a biscotti yarn. And um, it's a sock yarn. It's 85 superwash merino and 15 nylon. It's called Boomerang. So that's the um, Biscotti yarn. And the reason why I chose this is I'm trying to do things that are out of my comfort zone this year. And I would have never have chosen this yarn with the green in it. But the pinky, fuchsia, purpley color in there really was scrumptious to me. Yeah, there's like shades of different bright fuchsia colored pinks in there. Um, that part really spoke to me, but I never would have chose it with the green, but I, but something drew me to it. So I'm like, I'm getting it. It's outside of my comfort zone. That's what I need to start working on. And then this was another clearance yarn, $4 and 62 cents y'all. And this is mohair and bamboo and a little nylon. This is scares me <laughs> this yarn scares me but jill and uh, the other lady in there heidi i think oh yeah she was in the video y'all saw her she they pointed out to me that you can use this and hold it you know hold it uh with another yarn so strand it together with another yarn so it actually might go well with this to hold this with that and make a pretty little shawlette or something like that. But we'll see. I did see they had a sample um, shawl that had this plus a pretty, you know, light fingering weight yarn. Um, and it was a very lacy 
and they actually did not hold this with the other yarn, but they used it on its own as more of striping. And it was gorgeous, y'all. I hope I have that in my video. I don't know even know if, if I got that in the video or not. But um, if I do, maybe I could take a snapshot on my video and show y'all what I'm talking about. But anyway, so I got these two along with those three clearance. This one was only $4.62. Can't beat that. And then there were two other yarns. These were the these were the cha ching. These were gorgeous. And they are hand dyed in Vermont. Round my round mountain fibers. And this is what I got. They are gorge. They really just stuck out to me so much. And I was like, <gasps> it was that yarn that took my breath away. <laughs> it's so gorgeously dyed. And I just gorge. I may end up going back to get more. This is fingering weight 400 yards. So I may end up having to go back and get, they had like, um, like they had this one like say, you know, they have these with the speckles in it, with the different colors, and then they would have a companion yarn to go with it that was not speckled, but may just, um, like they may have had like these um, aqua tealy blues gradient and the other companion skank that went with it. But I was just like 400 yards fingering, I can, figure out something really pretty to make with that and just whether it's a shawlette or whatever to throw around you know my shoulders or my neck um that that's just gorgeous to me but truth be told y'all know it's probably going to sit on my shelf for a couple of years so I can just have some eye candy <laughs> it may even be sitting over here where y'all can't see it so I can look at it all the time <laughs> instead of what's behind me <laughs> So y'all know that I just had, you know, the um, 900 subby giveaway and um, I have not heard from the winner. So it's been over a week now. I gave her till I said the 8th, right? February 8th. Today's the 9th, by the way. It's Sunday. And um, so I went ahead and chose another winner and I'm, I'm sorry for the other person who I have not heard from, but... That's the way it goes, right? We can't just hold on to it forever. So the new person that I chose for the winner for the 900 subby giveaway is <clears throat> it's sweet tea, y'all. It's Teresa Patton. She's our little sweet tea. So, um, I know I'm going to hear from you, girl, because <laughs> I see you all the time on our social media platforms. So um, just give me a, um, a holler, holler, girl, and give me your address so I can get my stuff out to you. So y'all know I'm like a bag hoe, yo, right? <laughs> um, I ordered my first T Doddles bag and it is adorbs. I've, yes, I've already opened it because it came in before my last video and I forgot to show it. And when I saw it sitting there, I was like, oh no, I forgot to show everybody my Christy Cook bag. But um, when people were showing their bags that she made with the, um, the farm animals doing like yoga poses and stuff. I just thought that was so freaking adorbs. So I kept stalking her um, Etsy page to see if she was going to put another one up. But I didn't, I didn't see it, but I did see something else that was just adorable. I'm like, well, I'm going to order this because I need to try out Christy Cook tea dottle bags. And um, this is the one that I got. And I think it's just so cute. It's just a good little um, sock bag. It could even be a cake holder, you know, to put a cake in there and hold that. But um, I think it's a good, it's a good size for washcloths or 
or a hat even to work in. You know, it's just, it's a cute little, it is so cute, y'all. Let me see if I can get these animals up here better for you. Raccoons and a deer and a bear. And there's a fox. What else is on there? Like a beaver, I think, and a squirrel. Oh, there's a squirrel, Granny D. So, yeah, just adorbs. She sent it in this cute, cute little bag with this sticker on it and wrapped up in this sweet little tissue paper with her sticker. And, and then she's had this little surprise in there, which I halfway opened already. She sent some tea, some peppermint bark chocolate peppermint tea oh my gosh i know i'm gonna love this because i love that other chocolate tea from uh tracy right Ooh, i might have to have that tonight and she sent a little stitch marker that says made with love with a little heart on it so that's precious so thank you christy uh you probably won't even be watching this but anyway um i love it it's adorable. So I will keep stalking your Etsy page <laughs> when I remember. <laughs> there was a really cute bag I wanted to get from Ella uh, that she showed in one of her videos one day, but by the time I saw the video and got to her Etsy shop, bam, they were gone. But that's good for you, Ella. I'll keep watching and maybe one day I'll look upon one. I was also late to the game for Billy's. Um, she did like a... Um, an online live she did a live on youtube selling her bags and i'm like genius so you other girls should think about that too but she sold them all before i even saw that she was live and got on <laughs> they were gone <laughs> that's billy the crafty floridian but i'm sure y'all know that <laughs> so i wanted to show y'all a little update on my granny stuff I, although nothing is finished yet well this could be considered finished except for weaving on the ends. But I showed y'all the granny rectangle that I made with um, Margaret Olander's tutorial and I put a border on it. So I wanted to show you this border. Um, I've followed it for, a, it's specifically for the granny stitch bo shell border. I'm gonna hook that down below. That is by Hook by Robin. And um, the only thing is I had already put, it kind of doesn't look like hers, sort of, but I had, uh, I had already put a single crochet border on my blanket. But if I didn't, then, then these would go down into here, right? So since I already had a single crochet border, I just put the, the shells and the single crochet in the stitch in the middle stitch of where you would put put it through, right? You would just wrap it. You would do this this single crochet through this right here. But um, I still think it came out cute. I did it in the same yarn because I had, so my border is, is um, all the different colors of the same yarn that's in the blanket. I kind of think it would look nicer if it had a solid color border on it because now the border still just kind of blends in. But I think it's all right. Good enough. I'll link Margaret's uh, rectangle, uh, granny rectangle tutorial down below again and also Hook by Robin's tutorial for the shell stitch border for grannies if you'd like to see that. So an update on my Tunisian um, scarf slash wrap slash blanket. What, whenever I get bored enough with it, <laughs> I call it quits. <laughs> I'm actually almost there bored with it, y'all. <laughs> but um, we'll see. I'll just have this on the back burner as, you know, my when I get bored project where I don't have to concentrate on stuff, right? So I'll try, I think I only got about, I don't know, five, six rows since the last time I showed you. So that was about it on the progress on that. Okay, so here's the progress on my Rainbow Rhapsody Granny Circle. 
Let me show you. Well, the yarn's not in here anymore. Am I even showing you anything? No. That. Yarn Bee Rainbow Rhapsody. It's a size one yarn and I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook. I have one more color to go, the black. And then I'll be done. Let me hold it up and show you if I can. Now, I've laid this out flat and it has a lot of ruffle. So I'm not excited about the ruffling part. I wish it was more flat circle. And um, I may, I mean, I could rip out that last increase row and then just stop with the increases and it may straighten itself back out again. But it takes forever to get around this circle now with this little bitty yarn. And I'm just like, ain't doing it. Mm -mm, I ain't doing it. <laughs> but we'll see. I have to give it a little bit more thought. Let's see, where was my last increase row? So I'd, it's just one row and then I have an increase row. So me, if I ripped out two rows, so there goes the pink. And then we'll be back to the blue. I could rip that out and take out that increase row. Um, mm, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it. I may be happier with, with the end result if I did. I also ordered some blocking boards on um, Amazon. So I was thinking, well, maybe if I block it out, it'll be flatter and get bigger, right? Because you stretch it and it'll be bigger instead of all scrunched up with the stitches. I don't know. I've never blocked anything before. <laughs> it's, it's a new adventure for me. All this stuff. <laughs> Take that back. I did block a, a, um, a one of my Tunisian um, wraps, shawls. I was going to say scarf. It is kind of like a scarf because it's skinny. It's not really whole body shawl. Anyway, none of that matters. But I didn't block it with like pins and stretch it out. I just wet it and smoothed it out on top of some towels. So it didn't, you know, wasn't like real blocking. <laughs> so quite a few of you did ask me to, to um, do a tutorial for the um, Tunisian granny stitch. Here's my little sample right here. I just did the other night just practicing. And um, so I will definitely try to get that together this week. I wanted to try last week, but I had a few um, not so good days, you know, whatever, sickness or whatever. But um, so I did, didn't do much of anything last week, as you can see with my work, <laughs> with my whips, <laughs> hardly a thing. So I'm having so much fun. Uh, being pulled in so many different directions with all these um, different things I want to do. And I have something in mind I want to do for spring and Easter. And, and now I'm trying to throw learning how to knit in the mix. And I don't know how much further I'm going to go on that, but we'll see. <laughs> and um, and excited about Tunisian. So I want to get that tutorial out to y'all. And, and I still have in my mind of how I want to um, make a, a, um, spider amigurumi tutorial pattern too. So yeah, just way too many things and not enough time, right? So I got my, uh, Crochet Society in the mail the other day and it's just been sitting here because I haven't been up to much anything else. And, um, I think... Sarah Jane is doing the reveal video on the 10th, so I'm not going to publish a video on this until, you know, after her reveal, because that's what they ask, you know, is that you don't reveal anything before she does. So, but here's the box, because she has showed that already, and um, so look for this video, and I don't, I don't want to say how long, because you never know, but I think right after I finish the video I'm working on now, I'm going to do the opening of the box and, and then give myself a 
two, three days to work on a project in the box, and then I'll combine that video like I've been doing. So I'll have the opening and then I'll show you a project that I did out of it. And um, the Crochet Society box number, <gasps> what box is this? Eight, I think. I think it's box eight. Oh, I hope I got that right. <laughs> so thanks y'all for sticking around for Joe's Web number 41 and be sweet and be kind and be blessed. And I'll see you next time. Bye.